Mercy on us, O God, according to your great brotherhood in Christ. Again, for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, forgiveness, and remission of the sins of the servants of God, those who are under the impending threat of the coronavirus, those who are suffering, and those who are recovering from this affliction. Again, we pray for all of those who are working on the front lines as medical healthcare professionals. We pray, O oh Lord, for them and the scientists and the researchers to find a cure. For you are a merciful God who loves mankind, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages. Amen. O oh Lord, our God, who loves mankind, deliver us from the impending threat of the coronavirus. Send your angels to watch over and protect us. Grant health and recovery to those suffering from the virus. Guide the hands of the physicians and preserve those who are healthy that meet. We may continue to serve you in peace and glorify your most honorable and majestic name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Christ is risen from the dead by death trampling upon death and to those no two granting life. Indeed, the Lord is risen. Christos Anesti, everyone. Peace, love, and health to us all. Stacy. Thank you so much, Father, as always, for your leadership and your spiritual guidance. We uh, couldn't do it without you. Um, so before, before we move on to our fabulous presenters and our main event, I just wanted to take a moment, since we have you all here, to formally introduce the HDF Forum series that you've been emailed about and that this, that this event falls under the umbrella of. And we want to let you also understand why we planned our first event with you guys as our, our participants specifically. Um, having just celebrated our 20th anniversary, and many of you were there for that, um, I, I know that we've all, are, it's all been in front of us, all this growth that's happened. We've seen new programs established. We've seen existing programs continue to grow. In general, we all know what it takes to gather material, to uh, make it accessible for our students, to plan and execute performances. But what we don't wanna miss out on is a really essential piece, and that's the educational side that will enhance the understanding of what we're teaching. Um, we'll deepen the connection for ourselves and for our students. Um, we'll add another layer to our performances and, and to the things that we are able to present and understand and learn. And so we hope through events like today's webinar and for future events in this series, we can provide more opportunities for that open discussion and um, provide ways to look beyond the steps and the styling that, that we've come to focus on for our HDF as a competition. So why you guys? Why the directors? Um, and beyond directors here, we also have on, on the call some musicians, some judges, and all of you guys uh, on this call and the ones that were invited are really at the heart of what we do through HDF. Um, so we want to use this network, we want to expand it so that we can continue to improve the HDF experience uh, for the people that are a part of it. So thanks to all of you very, very much for being here today for your contributions and also a special thanks to the HDF Executive Committee for its support. Uh, before we move on from that, I also um, wanna go over some housekeeping and logistics of the actual lecture and Q&A. We will be, as Father Mark mentioned, recording both this portion, the lecture, as well as the Q&A portion of the call. Um, those recordings will be available to you later this week. We'll be sure to get those out to you. We do ask that you keep yourselves on mute for the duration of the lecture, which will be about 40 minutes. Regarding questions, if you, during the course of the lecture, if you think of things that you'd like to ask and you'd like to get those questions sort of in queue, uh, you're welcome to use the chat function to go ahead and privately message me those questions. Um, and so if you're on a desktop or la laptop, you should be able to get, um, you'll see on the chat button there on the bottom, 
um, that, that'll open up a window and you'll have the option of, of chatting to everyone or just finding me on the list, Stacy, I'm Stacy Zampas on this, um, and you can um, chat me your questions on mobile and on your iPad, that'll be on the more menu, the ellipsis. Um, so just tap that and you'll be able to find the chat function there. So we are hoping for a technologically smooth experience, but please give us your grace and your patience um, as we work through this and, and, um, and if we hit any glitches, we'll, we'll get through it as a group. So having said all of that, it is now my pleasure to introduce our presenters. Um, for today's topic, which I'm gonna, it's, it's modified slightly from when I first emailed you, the today's topic, stories of Greek dance, culture, and heritage. Um, so we're so honored and thrilled to have our two wonderful presenters here today, um, both of whom are currently on faculty at the Uni University of Athens. You've seen their bios on email, but I just wanna take a moment to more personally introduce both of them. Um, Dr. Irini Lutzaiki, she really has had an extensive and impressive career in the art and science of digging deeper. As a dance anthropologist, she's researched, she's published um, over the years about the historical, social, and political aspects of dance across many cultures. She's served uh, twice as a judge at FDF, so she is um, distinctly understands our platform. And through her thoughtful presentation, she'll be able to make some connections between her research and the practical side that we, that we experience as uh, being director. Um, in addition to her impressive resume, which goes, it's, it speaks for itself, on a personal note, I, I have just found her to be such an authentic, infectious spirit of energy, good humor, and curiosity, and I really, truly wish I had met her sooner. So thank you so much for being here. Um, our second presenter is Dr. Christos Babacostas, good old Christo, um, who is a familiar face in our HDF family. Um, as a judge, as a frequent workshop instructor, he really has played a significant role in the growth of HDF. Um, he's made many personal connections uh, for our programs to his fellow researchers, musicians, costume makers, live events in Greece. He's been a, a, just a wonderful conduit for that. His current role, which is teaching theory and practice of Greek dance at the university level, really com combined with his intimate knowledge of the evolution of our programs, it really made him a natural choice um, to bridge dance history with uh, our roles as directors. Those of you that know him know that his extensive knowledge is matched in equal part by his generosity of spirit, and he really has um, immeasurably enhanced Greek dance education in the US. So we are um, thrilled and honored to have both of you with us today. Um, and with that, I will um, ask you to please join me in welcoming Dr. Irene Zaiki and Dr. Christos Papakostas. Okay. Uh, may, uh, may I start with how many we are actually? It looks like we're at 45 currently. Ah, because I have no idea. Anyway, um, first of all, excuse me. Um, for any mistake, because it's the first time that I'm doing this, but I will uh, learn very quickly. Thank you very much for the invitation. It is uh, a great honor for me as well. Uh, first of all, for you that I met you some uh, weeks ago. So we have a lovely uh, carnival day. So in that uh, ball at the Lyceum Club, so today I would like, uh, excuse me, because the um, um, video is below and sometimes um, I have the feeling um, it's, it's not, uh, I can't see very well, but anyway, I will manage. Uh, so uh, the reason we um, select the new uh, title, Stories on Greek Dance, is because uh, uh, it was very difficult in 40 minutes to put everything. So we will jump a little bit from here and there. So uh, let's start. Is number one. Is okay? I'm going to share screen. Uh, 
ήρθε ολόκληρο. Έχασα το... As long as long as Rena struggling with uh, her PowerPoint. Uh, I'd like to thank you, all of you. That's what I'm going to do on the screen. Annette, Annette, Eva. Vaccine. If you oh. look on the bottom of your screen, there should be a green button that yeah, says share, share screen. screen. Yes, bravo. No. But, but Stacy, you have, if you're the presenter, you have to give her permission. There we go. Okay. Okay. In a few minutes, in a few minutes. Okay. It's okay, Elena. It's up. Sorry, stories of Greek dance, culture, and heritage. Discover the world of Greek dance from the village square to the dance class and to the theatrical scene. Okay. Uh, now I have uh, only, we have here and I can't see the whole, but anyway, I will manage. Uh, Dancing as a powerful tool for people to maintain their ethnic heritage. Dancing is a powerful way for people of diverse culture to maintain connection to their ethnic heritage, particularly when they have moved away from their country of origin or are first, second or third generation immigrants. And it's also a evocative way for people to link to their familiar cultural heritage and it can also serve as a means for others outside of a particular culture who feel an affinity with that culture to bond, engage with, even adopt the worldwide and sensitivities of cultures outside of their own heritage. Dance is also a highly effective and commanding means display one's own ethnicity or those that one has embraced to people outside of one's culture. If dance is considered an embodiment of culture, that is a people, values, and belief systems are embedded in uh, dances and manners of producing them, then presumably by watching dance, we see and possibly learn something about the cultural values aesthetics and the ideologies inherent in what we are watching. However, with today's global village mentality, what happens when dances are packaged and repacked, placed and replaced in different social and cultural contexts and done so by people outside the culture represented? What are the different agendas to those that participate in this package, acts, producers, and funders, performers, and observers, what might be considered culturally appropriate strategies to produce dance performances that include styles from diverse parts of the world, particularly when each cultural form has its own standards of produce founded in deep city aesthetic values Now, in the following section, the concept of dance is examined in terms of its functional and morphological features, movements, lyrics, melody, as well as the position of the role of the dance, the dance cycle, the custom, the ritual, as they are all presented in framework of different communities in Greece. Our examples come first, from text of the first period of Greek dance research, like this one, mainly as the black and white pictures, uh, 1990, uh, most of which convey a static image of dance outside of its social context. In a photograph, we know very well what is presented here, but we, we don't know what happened before or after. Our uh, NB, from specific personal feed researches, 
that adopts methods and techniques of the social science and especially the anthropology of dance. So the picture saw various from the very old, this is actually the, uh, the last of the uh, 18th, uh, 19th century but in Avdella. And uh, the last one is very uh, recent, is the Pontic uh, dance in, um, uh, in Germany, is the Pontic meeting, meeting. The others, okay, slowly, slowly we can uh, see. The Greek society. Our focus has been a Greek community, not in general. That's why we had to follow a um, kind of row. Uh, small uh, villages. So, and the popular culture with the historical dimension. In the presentation, we highlight the concept of community, geographical community, local communities, district communities, within mixed local communities, which as the smallest whole entity of culture function as a matrix where the various representations of dance acquire meaning and significance. Therefore, the word community will be a descriptive concept that will not lead us to a specialized discussion on the different types of communities and their social or political organization, as this has been in the last decade, which we describe as the traditional life, which binds all members of the group, affects all aspects of life, is transmitted orally, and is relatively economic and cultural self-sufficiency. But the definition of the 21st century community in Greece, the characteristics of which are described as the fragmentation and complexity of modern life, the expansion of the mass media, the expanded social and geographical mobility, the universal spread of cultural standards. So is a modern idea of what the community is. So we will try to give you an overall of what dance events in Greece. Is dance event employs a complex language or code in order to transmit its particular messages. This code is well known among the insiders of a given community. If the product of the interaction and mailing of several different modalities of human expression, both verbal and nonverbal, the nonverbal means of expression include dance, music, gesture, crafted objects, costume and rules of behavior. Among these media of nonverbal communication, the symbolic language of dance is perhaps the most important in the enactment of Greece customary social events. Dance in the Greek cultural tradition does not exist as an isolated artistic artifact. In order to understand the social, symbolic, and ritual pragmatic significance of the dance, it must be studied within the framework of its social context. The presence of the given dance in a specific context is not an harass occurrence, for example, not all dances would be suitable in a ritual context. A dance's compatibility within a particular social context depends in great measure on its formal structure. This is because the extra artistic significances ascribed to a dancer arise from and supported by its distinctive artistic rhythmic expression. In the context of a Greek feast, for example, group rather than couple dances appear to be appropriate, as in this context, the dancing can be considered as entertainment, uh, is a group uh, event. Couple dances may be more suitable at weddings, where there is a need to symbolically express the closeness of the matrimonial pair. A series of dances or a single dance or even a component feature of a dance may be the vehicle which carries different meanings depending on the context. A closed circle may be symbolized protection when the dance, choros, is the Greek word uh, for dance, 
is performed at the wedding, it carries with it meaning quite distinct from one it possesses within the context of a carnival. You can understand that, uh, that uh, when we dance in a carnival, we make jokes among ourselves. Otherwise, in, the, uh, in a marriage, we have to follow a specific uh, etiquette, let's say. So, uh, all social contexts, whether or not they involve dance, may be characterized as being either ceremonial or non-ceremonial in nature. The word ceremonial here is used to describe an event or custom which follows a conventionalized model of social interaction governed by prescribed and formalized mode of behavior and maintained by tradition. It is perceived be its uh, participant as a transfiguration of normal social behavior or everyday life. The ceremonial context may be further distinguished as being either ritual or not ritual. A ritual involves specific actions that are performed in the belief that they, would, uh, they will produce desired effect. It is the inherent faith in the efficacy of, the, of these actions to bring about the response that distinguishes ritual behavior. The ritual context may serve to express, control one's relation to nature through uh, work, in which case they pertain to the season work cycle. Others serve to secure or reinforce the relationship of an individual to his family or that of the family to its larger kinship group or to the community as a whole. These rituals are part of the life cycle. This session introduces a briefly described only those social contexts in the Greek tradition for which dance is an important medium. Let's go. What is important here is to say is that in Greece, time is measured not so much by the official calendar or by the work and, uh, uh, and festivals appropriate to the various seasons of the year. Plugging, sowing, harvesting, and thrusting. Christmas, Easter, St. George's Day, the Assumption of the Holy Virgin, St. Demetrius Day, are some of the landmarks of the yearly cycle in Greece. Spring is the beginning of spring marks, the beginning of farming activities. Clean Monday, the first day of Lent, 50 days of Lent, St. Lazarus Day, Easter St. George's Day, 1st of May. Summer is dominated by work associated with the growing of the crops. The 1st of August, the Assumption of the Holy Virgin. Autumn. In autumn, they expect the recompense sale of the products. 14th uh, September, the Holy Cross. Winter. Winter is associated with festivities, rest, recreation, and matchmaking. A series of practices enacted between the latter part of October, the first week of January, and the fourth Sunday of Carnival mark the beginning of a new work cycle. St. Demetrius Day, Christmas, New Year, Epiphany, the Blessing of Water, St. John the Baptist Carnival. In general, time is measured by the labor period, spring, summer, autumn, and the non-labor period, winter. Dance, music, gesture, pantomime, text, costume, props, ritual rules, and magical actions serve to carry out the customs, which can be divided in four seasons. Actually, this is not exactly panhellenic. Uh, the uh, four seasons is in Thrace, especially. Uh, in Macedonia, usually they have each month uh, dedicated to a specific work they have to do. Uh, in, and the nomads, the Sarakatsani, divide the period, the, used to divide the period, not the present Sarakatsani, the old times, in two semesters, uh, the winter and the summer. 
the winter usually there are down and in um, in the in the village in, in the um, plains and uh, uh, during summer go up on the mountains so we start with the no a jump excuse me this one here here okay these are some uh, pictures from Lazarines is a um, no, um, uh, dance uh, at Easter time, two people just here is the lamb. Uh, here is the second day of uh, Easter or the 23rd of April, which is the St. George Day, Anestani Arcadia, it's a whole ritual. Uh, we will give you bibliography so you will learn about uh, all these specific um, uh, event customs. This is the uh, Trata dance at Megara, Arachova. This is the Rusali only for men, Megara again. The 1st of May in Megara. Here is uh, at Pendapolis in Macedonia. Uh, especially at Easter time with the Zurna players. Uh, here is a, in uh, Skiathos Horos Kamara. Uh, excuse me, this is the Kamara with the priest who is the first, the leader of the dance uh, um, chain. And uh, this is the Tetramida from the Spilion in uh, Macedonia Grevena. Yep are uh, representative. However, we have dance events that we must follow a whole story. Uh, the dead dance at the Panigiri is uh, Simnu in Mesolonghi. This ritual symbolizes the fight between life and death, winter and spring, and uh, good and evil. A common folk motif with thick structure, Agon, contest, pathos, death, thrinos, lamentation, and anagnorisis, resurrection. Uh, you can follow is the dead person, is the fight, the dead person, lamentation, lamentation, the musicians, and here is the resurrection. So everybody is very happy and dance around the, uh, the person who is now Life in, back in life, and of course, is the uh, the fighters in uh, I guess, uh, seniors with all the um, their um, costume. Uh, this motif, Aegon, Pathos, and uh, uh, Anagnorisis, we can find in many many uh, areas in a different way in Greece, but only not only in Greece, in the Balkan as well. Go further. So, okay. Uh, so uh, again, we are uh, here. We are in summer. You can see here the um, label. Uh, the dance, of, uh, a women dance for uh, Easter. This is a nice picture, old picture from Xiromero, uh, Xiromero in uh, uh, Macedonia. Uh, dance in Samarina, the first leader and the other followed. Uh, in Kisamos, where is part of my field research, is the Panigiri uh, in meta of metamorphosis. Icaria, the well known, and you can see the difference between the two photographs in which. Both are from Icaria. Uh, the pilgrimage in Tinos. Also, this is a kind of ritualite movement. So that's why we have this picture here. Uh, always a panigiri or a celebration. Uh, we need food and wine. So uh, here in Kisamos is the people who uh, individual who offer uh, the food to the pilgrimage. 
Uh, and here is a normal summer panigiri, uh, as uh, in many places you can uh, uh, see. If you have any question at, at the end. All the questions at the end. Go on. Uh, okay. Probably is a, a familiar, uh, familiar uh, photographs from the Panigiri of Olympos, the isolated uh, um, village in, on, the, um, isle, on the island of Carpathos. Uh, is very special, very, very well known, and is the most photographed um, ritual in Greece. Everybody knows Carpathos because uh, till today women wear their own costume, uh, not because of the panigiri, but because they continue to wear this costume. Um, the, the, uh, the panigiri lasts uh, three days. For these three days, women change three times uh, a different dress in order to participate in the various stages of the Panigiri. You can see the place where the Panigiri takes place is the uh, Acrotiri of Orkunda. People carry all this um, suitcases with uh, dresses and uh, carpets and uh, sheets and everything to because two overnights they stay in this in this place. Here is the musicians, the lira and the tabuna and uh, lute, usually la lira tabuna, and the the person who keep the uh, the row who will um, uh, start the dancing. All women stand around, dressed with the women clothes um, costume. Uh, actually, here is a cloth; it is not a costume. And uh, they are waiting for the uh, dancing. This woman, you can see the girls that uh, their mother, the white dress is every day. Uh, dress but this one is the festive dress and uh, they prepare their own daughters who are ready for marriage no one used to allow at that time the evening during the evening uh, dancing to participate uh, except uh, girls who are ready for marriage always mothers uh, try to decorate it, uh, well, present the, uh, their own uh, daughters. The musician on the table, and the dancing is around this table. The, the space is very uh, narrow, so they can expand and many people to go. Uh, the, I went there in 1979. And it was the first time in my life that I could enter uh, in the dancing circle. First of all, because I had the European clothes, as we used to say, and everybody wore their own. You can see here, the space is very narrow. People are overnight here around, so they have a tent or a place where they stay. This is the cave where the mass uh, is taken, uh, evening mass and the morning. Uh, of course, the St. John, uh, John day, uh, the 29th of August, uh, we fast. So everything of the food is uh, watermelon or uh, things that we can eat, uh, fruits and uh, vegetables. Uh, you can see here, the uh, musician above the, the table and people around they dance. He, here from above, another scene. And you can see also that what is interesting here is that the uh, evening, 
the morning dance, the evening dance, the morning dance are only for married uh, girls and women, but the afternoon dancing is only for the second daughter of the family and smaller. And uh, uh, in this uh, dance, they were the girls, the, uh, the special girls uh, costume, dress. And it is very also impressive. You can distinguish from the material uh, that the dress is made. Uh, if it is full of flowers, then there are uh, uh, people who, um, um, people from the diaspora from Germany. Otherwise, the other kind with more. Um, um, lamented, uh, more bright, comes from the state. Uh, you can see from the material from which part the, the people are uh, come. Of course, uh, as you can uh, see, the Olympians uh, of the diaspora is the, uh, uh, during the, this panigiri that they have to uh, be at the, in the village in order to participate in this specific and very port, important for them uh, dancing. They show their, their uh, local identity. Okay, I think, okay. So we passed to autumn, 14 of um, September. Uh, on the island of Egina, very close to Piraeus, just one hour by boat, uh, is the custom of Livinos. Uh, many of you speak uh, Greek. Livino is the time after the sunset. So symbolizes the end of summer and summer jobs in the fields. It also symbolizes the passage in autumn and winter. You see, all are right. Every year on September 14, on the day of the cross, this custom is revived in the village of Kipseli through a special performatic event. It is accompanied by a lot of dancing and sitting. Uh, you can see the procession. You can see the person here is a dead person. This is um, a comic. Uh, this is the poster that they say the cultural uh, association revive the custom so invite the people to participate in the uh, uh, village square and in the school is final the custom here is the person the girls uh, I, you can see because you are, you, you are your heads here is the lady with a microphone so you can see that uh, is revived and not natural, and they lament the dead person. Uh, is uh, and then at the end of the whole event, they burn, they put it on a fire. Okay, we pass the winter. It's a little bit cold today. Um, winter from the 1st of January up to the end of um, uh, uh, to the end of uh, Christmas uh, period 1st to 6th we have especially in the northern part of Greece many customs because all of them most of them at least are agricultural so these uh, um, customs are very much related to agricultural life. So in Neo Monastery, 
where is my own um, field research and my uh, dissertation is on this uh, area on refugees from Eastern Romania. The period of Christmas and New Year is dominated by men whose participation is based on age category. There is a reversal of gender when men dress and vice versa. In Neo Monastery, this figurative is acted out by various groups, each with its own sarta group of six unmarried male singers, a musician who plays flute, and two zoomorphic figures, the devedzis, the camel driver, and a camel, which go from house to high, or to house to house, each one of his own neighborhood. The dance, and of, of course they sing uh, uh, carols. And uh, each verse, uh, it depends uh, uh, of the members of the family they uh, visited. Uh, the dance. Why celebrants used to dance from the belt, the, the dance, the dance from the belt, the, uh, well known Zonaradicos, and sing a particular song, Good Camels, Good Girls, a type of the Zonaradicos dance? The dance of the figures of the Sigathistos, the well known marriage dance, here performed in its ritualistic style as a couple each one of the participants using sideways stepping, stamps, and jumps. You can see the camel driver, the camel is a man also carried this creature. Here is the fight. They fight between themselves. The camel died. The, uh, the driver lament, and then they have again what uh, we have already said before. And the, uh, it's very good uh, to, um, for the camel driver to beat you with this uh, phallus on your back for health. And uh, uh, of course, uh, in the main square where the final dancing uh, take, um, uh, takes pl uh, place, um, the two figure, the, the, the various groups, pares, meet there and they uh, dance all together. The musical instruments is the gaida and the dauli, or uh, the last year, the accordion plus guide, two gaidas and dauli, and of course, the flute. And here is the people dance. You can see, take a, we, all we used to say, a circle. The circle actually is in our fantasy. What we mean by circle is there is no space and is the periphery of the square. My idea is if the uh, square was a triangle, then they had to dance in a triangle. You mean, they try to turn around, around, up to the end in order to have space for the people to use the empty space here and to make figures and to make the face-to-face -face dance. Um, okay, winter again, in other uh, parts of Greece. Uh, Mesotopos. Um, in Lesbos, Babugera in Calivrisi, uh, Nevusa, Messinia. This is like the one, this is carnival time, huh? Apocries. Uh, this, this is from uh, Lehena in the Peloponnesus. Also, there are people who uh, parade. In the, uh, among the, street, the streets of the little town, and they keep this uh, um, like um, hammer. Uh, the, there is a figure, an um, old lady, there is a doctor, and two girls who are men dressed with uh, Amalia. Because in Peloponnesus, most women wear this type 
or more or less this type of, of uh, costume, the, of dress. Uh, this comes from um, Petrusa in the northern part of Greece with all this, uh, the bell is very important and you can see the black color in the faces. Uh, this is in Tirnavos, the modern uh, carnival and uh, Xanthi, the famous carnival of Patras, but uh, again, in uh, many um, towns, they um, have this kind of um, uh, carnival uh, time. Ducks, okay. Red. Yeah. Red. Hmm. Stop there. So, another famous and well known um, custom ritual, the ritual of Yenitsari and Bulas, takes place every year at carnival time during the last two weeks and the first Monday of Lent in Ausa. The troop which takes part consists of a group of men and young boys wearing the fustanella with a great number of coins covering their chest and one of the more brides, the bulles, who are always men dismissed as women. All the members of the group wear masks except the children. One that on the day on which the event takes place, the musicians, Zurnas and Dauli, players, collect the performers for their homes and the whole band, accompanied by the musicians, play the Zalistos, proceed to the previous uh, chosen area where the performance is to take uh, place. You, uh, usually they perform the dances uh, in the crossroads. There they perform the dances called Zalistos, Patinada, Papadia, Makrinitsa, and Isamikos. So you can see the group. Uh, here is the bulla, also covered with the mask, and, and is um, not allowed to take out the mask unless the last um, in the evening of um, the last uh, day of carnival, which is the last Sunday. Very interesting, very popular. Uh, and now everybody is invited by special invitation. They also, they have uh, um, elaborate uh, and they have uh, um, put uh, posters in order to make known uh, through radio special. Uh, so uh, uh, it's not uh, an, according to the old way, but still the basic uh, rules are kept by everybody, even by the small children. Ella? Okay. Here is not a specific um, occasion. Everybody can dance anytime. This lady danced Carcilla Mas in from Cappadocia. Here is a uh, gathering in Karoti at Evros. Two Zurnades here actually is a photograph from the uh, dictatorship uh, of four, uh, 4th of August uh, in uh, between the periods 1937 to 1934 before the Second World War. So it was um, groups from all over Greece that arrived in Athens. And for the first time, uh, villagers uh, perform in front of a non-known audience for them. Uh, here is the group of, uh, from uh, the area of Rumluki. Uh, here is from Ipios. You can see the, in, uh, the uh, first dancer who actually the musician play special for the first uh, dancer who is excited 
and um, perform and improvise um, for himself and for the others. And the others just accompany him uh, in the dancing. From the island of uh, Sipnos, Vile and Lut, accordion is um, accompany especially the um, is the actually is the main uh, now uh, musical instruments for the refugees from Eastern Romania, people who came from Bulgaria. Otherwise, the accordion in the Peloponnesus arrived from the immigrants from the state. So it's different road. Uh, here is the, again from Epirus is the Halkas in the middle. And here is uh, Gypsy who uh, actually is, it was the um, baptist of my little niece. And uh, the moment we were in the taverna and we ate in uh, Thessaloniki, uh, it was uh, some musician, uh, musician who passed by and stay with us and we dance with music. So it was a um, uh, moment uh, non-predictive. And uh, the last uh, uh, picture uh, scene I have, if you want, yeah, okay. Uh, I say that uh, winter, uh, marriages at weddings is usually in winter. Why? Because everybody has finished with uh, their jobs in the field, have money in order to spend. Uh, on uh, Saint Dimitrius Day usually was the ma matchmaking and during uh, winter definitely it was uh, the, um, the, the ritual of the, the wedding. So here is uh, in Neo Monastery, Neo Monastery, you can see the couple dance, the Sigathistos, and in this area is the first time the man dance with the woman. So uh, Sigathistos in this area is especially a wedding dance. Here is the preparation of the dough, is the first girl dressed in a specific uh, way. And after that, they uh, throw the uh, final uh, one and became all white. Uh, between uh, the various stages, there is a procession that uh, from one house, from the house of the bride to the groom and from groom to the bride's house and uh, vice versa, uh, they uh, bring uh, uh, things, uh, props that are needed for, uh, uh, for the uh, wedding. Here is the uh, couple dance among women and they celebrate and they dance as a uh, thanks for, um, to the bride that uh, the bride offered to them uh, towels or other things. You see also uh, the two women. The procession to the church. This is the old one. This is um, the, in the 1983 to see the difference how it was. Uh, these are the friends of the or the Bratimia is the friends of the bride uh, who are actually who uh, offer they uh, they prepare uh, the food uh, they uh, are, um, offer the um, wine and so on and this is the la the dance after marriage. Uh, either in the square or at, in the house, and the milia is the characteristic uh, symbol of the um, of uh, marriage. Uh, milia is a um, product, a product. Uh, a very uh, how do you call it? I forgot. Milo, uh, uh, very good as a rosy festival. Okay. Uh, um, to, for good health and for uh, uh, the, the, the babies to burn. 
So the Greek wedding is a complex ceremonial which utilizes poetic text, music, dance, dramatic sketches, gestures, props and props to carry out the various functions of its component ritual moments. Of these means of expression, the dance is the, is the most important. The ritual function of the dances, those pertaining the wedding as a rite of passage from one stage to another, are rites of separation in which the individual is cut off from his previous stat status, rites of transition, and finally, rights of incorporation in which the individual enters his new social status. Its pragmatic functions, those pertaining to the wedding performance, are to introduce, conclude, and intervene the various ritual moments. In addition, they function to entertain and provide aesthetic pleasure. The wedding ceremony can be viewed as a dramatic play divided into several acts and scenes. The play lasts two weeks and takes place on many different stage settings. The bride's grooms, uh, the bride's grooms and both parents' homes, the church and the village square. These scenes are tied together by a ceremonial procession which moves from one scene to another. This is my part, Christos. For the next part, I will be bored. <laughs> okay. For that. Let's let's share my uh, screen now. Arena, yes, Lucio, for hello. Vika. Okay. So can you see my the PowerPoint? And you are. Can you see my the PowerPoint? Is yours? Yes. Okay. Stacy, you can see the, the PowerPoint? See. Stacy. Yes, I see it. All good. Okay, okay. So as, as you easily understand, uh, Arena is like typhoon category six. So <laughs> I try to be uh, on time. Uh, the last few uh, slides is about things that I I suspect that more of you are very familiar. So it's the arrangement in space and time, that type of uh, horse in the Greek dance. I would like to say uh, a couple of things before I move on. I have many types of dances like Chamico, like Bohem Sainz and Rubluki, Papavia, Sitos in Hania, Isus in Kalgnos, and so on. Dances that have many, many kinds of improvisations from the leader. Uh, there is a common assumption in the Greek dance world that uh, it's only leader's uh, skill. And we used to say, that the other dances do nothing. This is, this is not the truth. And it's more that, that they support the leader. It's a part of the same context part of the same event and the most important, they, they share the community's spirit. The other thing, if I've got a kind of dances like face-to-face, vis-a-vis, like Kansla Mothers, another very stereotypical sometimes assumption is like uh, there, is no, there is no hold, it's a free space. Actually, after my research and my experience, I tend to, to believe that there is no actual hold, but the hold is more symbolic and they don't dance the one with, with the other, but most likely the one for the, for the other, which is totally different. Now it is in our second part and uh, we have a some, some, a few elements for the Greek dance history and the cultural context. And I think we have things to discuss afterwards. Here, there is some, let's say, important date for the, the Greek dance scene. It's 1980. 
think I'm on this. So, sorry. So 1911 has the foundation of the liquid leader of Greek women. 1922 has been a catastrophe. The generation of 30s, the demand for the redefining the Greekness, we belong to the East or the West. The continuity theory that the Greek culture is a continuing form from ancient Greece to Byzantium than nowadays. There is a significant moment for the Greek dance world in 1952, the Serbian, the professional Serbian ensemble, Kolo, offered the dance performance in Greece. Keep it for the for later. Dora Strato idea was to establish a permanent professional ensemble because she was very influenced from that performance. Actually, she managed that in 1963. And 60s was a, another very important decade when both Anglo-American individuals from the crea recreational folk dance scene traveled to the villages and towns, the homeland, film and video, local dance events, and uh, actually, they, they introduced new dances in the diaspora, all the folk dancing in the States or in Europe. I think it's, it's important to stay a little bit in this lady. Dora Trato is a, a great personality of Greek, uh, Greek dance. I'm from a totally bourgeois family, well, well educated. Uh, her father was Greece prime minister after there's been a catastrophe uh, in, in very hard and difficult situations executed. She lived 10 years with her, uh, with her brother in uh, Belgium and in France. She was a dancer and a choreographer. And she returned back in the 30s, back in Greece. And I, I assume there was a part of the generation of 30s, Ilya to Trianda. A, a generation that deal, deal and face the dilemma wh where are we belong. And we're talking about Manos Katizakis, the composer. Taruhis, the painter, more, more or less the painter, and many other intellectuals that after the shock of Smyrna catastrophe they should redefine the Greekness. I consider that Rostrado is a part of this movement. I was very close to all these persons, and she was very dedicated to the, of the idea of and the power of the Greek dance. The thing is that because of this time, she had a very specific aesthetic taste about Greek dance and how Greek dance should, should look like. Uh, there is many, many stories about, about her and talking about the felicity and the selection of her repertoire is very important for me and don't forget that because there are many of you in uh, today that experience all the movement that Dora Strato dance teachers came to the stage and introduced and teach dances from the Dora Strato uh, theater. Because of the theory of continuity, because she was, she was very strict in the ancient Greece idea, all these theories influence her work and her approach to the staging. To be more clear, 
it was out of question to present dances from Cappadocia, for instance, that she loved very, very much in Turkish or in Farasa language idiom. There is a story that describes all this situation, but once she invited as she, she used, and it was his innovation that she invited people from the villages to dance with theater dancers, and they taught them and danced together for, uh, for the summer performances. Once, some of her, uh, her teachers arranged for, for a dance group from Grevena to perform and teach dances in the theater. I, I don't remember actually the, the name of, of, the, of the village, but she went to the theater and she realized that the, the, this dance this village played the dances under the music of Halkina, of brass bands. So they take it, take them away, and she was yelling to, to them, talking, "Exo Casaroles, Exo de Generia," because she didn't consider that brass band was part of the Greek culture. It's very easy years ago to be critical on, on her, but was the the, the general cultural and social context of these days, of those, of those days. Lena. Yes, uh, I would like to um, uh, pay your attention in uh, the two emblem of whatever says. Okay, okay. The two emblems, the Lyceum Club and that of Dora Stratu, uh, the one is the head of Minerva, the, uh, that of the Lyceum Club. Boris you want to go a little bit further? Hey, you see it here, it's not. Yeah. Can you? Yeah, you see it, yeah. A little further. Hello? Yeah. Here. Uh, the Lyceum Club emblem. Who is he? Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Is uh, 1911 is the head of the Minerva wisdom. The other, the emblem is a couple of dancers. You, you see the idea. Uh, the mentality and the ideology of the two um, dance groups. So uh, we go. The yeah. Lyceum Club, uh, for which I have to uh, speak, uh, was founded in the, uh, the late 1910 by Kailiroi Siganou Paren, a pioneer uh, of the feminist movement in Greece and the country's first woman journalist, and a group of women comprising her clo uh, closest uh, associates. The creation of this female cultural center was the result of 20 years of hard work by Paren, who is the spirit of the return to the roots movement, which dominated Greek intellectual and artistic life and to contribute to the pure Greek style. According to the Lyceum status, uh, which uh, were officially recognized in the 19th February 1911. Each of the uh, objectives included the creation of co uh, co uh, coalition among women of the letters, arts, and sciences. The publication of the Lyceum's official periodical, The Bulletin, attempted to provide a platform for the group's aims. In short, to increase awareness both for gender equality and for the preservation of Greek folk culture, dances, songs, and costumes. Paren created dance workshop where girls would develop the art of traditional dancing under the instruction and supervision of specific dance teachers. At the same time, she highlighted the Greek tradition younger and older, focusing on the aesthetic, ethnic, and social value of this tradition. Change. 
this is the entrance of the building. Okay. The dance performances. So we will see the history of the Lyceum through the performances. Emphasis on the continuity. A celebration of the old time classic Greek ideal, albeit in its uh, uh, summation through dance, an allusion to some of the eternal Greek values, such as democracy, the theater, a Christian faith, all suitably packaged for Athenian audiences. A confirmation of Hellenic identity overall through a rehearsal of Greek history based on tangible archaeological evidence and is aesthetic appeal, and moreover, a real affirmation of the culture connection, past, present, eternal, with the land of the sea that gave birth to the peerless Hellenic spirit. Christo, um, Alex, uh, Seto. This idea of continuity in itself, from classical art through Byzantium to modern Greece, was essential to the construction of Greek national identity in the late 19th and through uh, the 20th century and uh, remains in use with no signs of uh, subsiding. The scheme proposed by the Lyceum Club is needless to say an old one, which has been tried and tested by Greek and Western scholars to represent the way of explanation historical developments in ancient, medieval, and modern Greece. Here you can see the first performances, the Archaic, the Minoan, here, uh, the Byzantine, the Neo-Hellenic uh, art, the modern folk, and the Amphesteria. So you can see the um, spirit, the, um, how the performances look like. Next, please. Yes, please. Now is a period between uh, 65 to 67. There are uh, is, uh, uh, performances uh, in the various places of Greece. Uh, um, I, I must say that the Lyceum is the center in Athens. And uh, the Lyceum has 52 um, subgroups uh, in every uh, town in uh, the in every um, uh, region uh, in every the, the the capital of every, every uh, region. So we have 52 and 29 offices abroad. Uh, is a, a very huge uh, organization, actually. So at that time, uh, it, uh, the Central uh, Lyceum uh, started to develop and augment it and uh, collected um, uh, dances from various places in, in Greece. So uh, the dance group went uh, all over the year in the various places in order to reinforce local um, Lyceum clubs, in order to organize their own dance teams uh, and to perform um, for their own sake. So at that time, we travel a lot uh, um, I mean in Greece. This is in Rhodos, the, uh, here above, and here is in Zakynthos. And uh, we, we, um, uh, for uh, three, uh, two years, we turn around a whole uh, country, even in Cyprus. Prohora. The Lyceum started to uh, organize um, researches, or what we say, uh, we went to the villages two or three days, no more, maximum one week, in order to collect uh, the dances, not to study the society, but to collect dances. Here is Fibos Anogianakis, a um, uh, famous ethnomusicologist and mentor for myself, and I am here some years ago. 
um, during uh, the job uh, and we turn around the villages in order to record them, uh, music, why we have all this equipment and to learn the dancing in situ. Uh, personally, I must say that I am a dancer. I'm not only a person who likes to dance, but I am a dancer, professional, not professional dancer, but I have studied dance and uh, nota dance notation. So uh, um, I come from uh, the dance part and not from the tradition. And this is a, um, is a very important. Uh, here is uh, the dance lessons at, um, of the Liceo. Or you can see how uh, along with the people, we uh, close to each other, uh, we try to uh, learn not only the steps, but to feel the, uh, the tension of the dancer uh, besides me. Um, we use logbooks in order to write um, notes, photographs, of course, uh, tape recording, and of course, video and uh, film. That time, uh, the, the first period, it was only three minutes. It was very difficult to capture the, the, the whole dancing. But later with video, our uh, job became much, much uh, uh, easier. Okay. Uh, we collect dances for one person uh, purpose in order to uh, uh, augment uh, our repertoire because the idea of the Lyceum is to make performances or to present uh, the dances to the people. Uh, Actually, the word performance in the um, archives where I studied uh, very much of the Lyceum, the word uh, performance started to be on the books or on the um, uh, program uh, of the theatrical performances much later. But uh, till uh, 90, um, still we have presentation, uh, display, but not the word performance, because performance uh, was uh, equal with theatrical performance. But for us, for the Lyceum, uh, it was um, offered to the public. We solve uh, the Greek dances through our bodies. So uh, we collect these dances and uh, we had to transform with small choreographers, uh, choreographers choreography in order to make uh, better for an audience. So theatrical performances in the Aliki Theater during winter under the suspicions of the Greek National Tourist Organization. Local dances organized in suite. Participation of the dance group in international, national and local festivals, competitions and theatrical performances in uh, abroad, the dance teacher is mediated to a cultural director, change role, the creation of children's performative group. Today, the Lyceum Club still retain the dynamic presence, always rely on the voluntary contribution, and yes, okay. Uh, to its members while attempting to connect the long experience of the social action, the management of the cultural heritage and the uh, scientific knowledge. In her work, Paren prompted to relationships between art and national identity and up notions of authenticity and knowledge. Issues which are at the heart of the, at the, of the search of, uh, for an adequate philosophy and dance education. This twofold aim represented in culmina uh, culmination of parents' lifetime struggle. Paren died in 1940. So through the theater programs, you can see the various uh, places that the next uh, 
screen, Christos. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And um, on uh, the right, Toligio uh, των Ελληνίδων, two years ago we celebrate 100 of uh, life. So we do a special volume uh, edited by the uh, Liceo. It's not necessary to just to take a room. We've got uh, many performances, many presentations, many occasions, many, uh, the Liceum um, um, took place. Oh. Cultural dance events, 19, 2008. Um, the performances change. Now we have specific plot. And uh, these are all programs, just to uh, tell you some of them. Um, the famous performance uh, dances and songs uh, from the ritual of wedding. It was a, a whole wedding on the Eros at the Theater, as the mega event, as I used to, uh, to call them. Again, uh, another, another year it was the um, uh, the um, uh, songs from people who travel, who are abroad. Uh, songs and dances from the cycle of life, baptism, marriage, death. Uh, the other one is uh, dances and songs from, uh, inspired from the sea. Uh, choreographimata is like a choreography, something like that. It, uh, you, you see, there are a theme according to which the, the plot is developed. And Christos? Yeah. Uh, the School of Physical Education. All right. Well, the third poll for, for today's lecture as to understand to the historical context uh, is the School of Physical Education and Sports Science or University Academia or Ethniki Academia Somatikis Agogis. In this context, for dance as a part of the national education curriculum, Greek for dance, they take for Greek for dance for the curriculum in academic level versus to the danger of imported sports and games. As a very central role for the construction of national dance repertory as a part of the national state building process. Again, the continuity theory is present. And in 90, 1983 became a four years academic school and in 2002 have an MA and doctorate program. What is most important is again the repertoire in the context of uh, in the Academia of the Physical Education was influenced from the national, the mainstream national ideology to for the clean, authentic, I mean, clean and authentic dance forms. Because and in terms of uh, time, I think it's, it's good to, to give you an example. And I think it's gonna raise many, many questions, I guess. More, very, very important. And basic dances for the Greek uh, school curriculum was Petrozales, Sirtos, Chamikos, none of dances from Macedonia, none of dance from, no dances with a foreign in Slavic or in, in, in Turkish. Was, and believe it or not, they play during the lessons, they play these dances like Garaguna or Sirtos with a piano, accompanied by, by piano. Things change there. Eh? Uh, but I have a good example, I think, 
because during the national state building process, Daskali, teachers and gymnastics, physical education, they teach the dances all over Greece. So let me show something. Let's see that. You can see a video. Daisy? Daisy? Yes, I see it. Okay. Also, Christo, if I could just take one second. And just let everyone know that we're yeah. we're running a little bit over, but we're going to move to the Q and A part soon. Is that fine? Very very soon. Very very soon. Very soon. Thank. You. Okay. Let's see that video. Okay, a quick second one. And the last one, really quickly, sorry guys. Okay, this is the last part, promise. So, uh, what about the three videos? The first video was uh, members of the Roma community of Heraklia in Ceres doing a local dance of Stripsko. The last video was the same dance. That's what one woman lady under the music is to my duties, me, Rogi, Tara, Bara, Papa, Tam, Tara, Rira, Rira, Rara, 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 Ram. In the middle was the interpretation from Mudakis, Taturnerakia. If you can follow the lyrics, it, it talks about Serbian girls and Turnerakia. As far as I know, Turnerakia is something like Neranji in Serbian. What I'm trying to say is, In Iraklia, this dance is important from Serbia because they, they, leave, they left them, they abandoned them three years back to 19, 1916 to 1918. They lived there for three years, actually in, in Pozarevic, in, uh, in Serbia, one hour east of Belgrade. They returned back in Iraklia. They adapt and they like the music very, very much. The steps are the typical, the most typical, the most representative Serbian dance of Kolo. They adapt a, a music, two different types of music. One, let's say, more Macedonian style, with Zornades in 7-8, more in Nastrigin or something like that style. And because of the presence of the Greek official school system, they adapt also the music of the Mesu Mayus Mirovies as a Pedozali. Not only that, we know that troops from Cretan or warriors in the Balkan during the Balkan uh, wars and have and flow between motives, lyrics and dance types. 
Again, what I'd like to say is very difficult to decide what's the real authentic, what's the real, because the, the dance phenomenon is totally dynamic and reacts and lives together with the history, the society, and the culture. We have two more slides. I think we can show them uh, as last part, but, and we have, we can talk for sure now. There are some thoughts of us, like Elena. Okay. Because, okay, they, we ran late, so this is our last slide. So, excuse me, it must be. That's it. Lipon. The stage of the classical. Oh, he. Be a piece of the left hand. Όχι, το Σάμπλα Θότς, κατευθείαν. Να κερδίσουμε. Αυτό, ναι, αυτό. Οκ, να το. Ωραία. Ωραία, γρήγορα, ναι. Η conclusion that could be drawn is that performances with the plot along with their diverse content are more of national narrative which despite the fact that partial actions are frequently perceived as filled for the pursuit of elements is supported entirely of the re-synthesis of information on rural dams, many of the past, seen nevertheless through a spectrum of evaluation on the basis of a timeless era. When that used to happen, when that used to, how it happened, and the result that the past is high, um, uh, highlighted and used theatrically, since this usage is combined with a present day perspective in respect, the performance is also called for an anthropological reading which explore expressive art in which music and dance are central, though the most central element is the theatrical tradition and interpretation. A stage performance reveals a volume of spiritual work, the greatest part of which went beyond the level of the mere reconstructing of the, uh, reconstructing of the dances. Every creator managed in their own way the dances and customs that they choose as uh, per, of expression, yet all invested in the search for ideas through direction. Thus, they revealed that they share some concerns, they surpassed the limits of tradition and touch upon the art of dance. Important elements is the printed program. We saw many of them that accompany every performance, particularly where look after um, informative with extensive text and photographs and the digital presentation of the perform uh, performances, that is the DVD that every organization bro brought forward. Some of them, not all of them, of course. But anyway, the DVD is the only uh, material culture that they, uh, product that they can uh, have. Otherwise, the performance is already back. In conclusion, I would say that it is a dangerous thing when reality is transformed into something other than what it is uh, in the village. What is interesting is to discover theater within folk activities themselves, as the latter have their own theatricality. Each custom, of course, has an, uh, its own theatricality. Every reading is a revelation. However, I would say that there is always the element of subjectivity in the manner of interpret, uh, interpreting a spectacle, while, of course, respecting its objective features. That's it. Hi, all. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, both both to Christo and Torena for it was um, for your presentation, for your thoughtful um, thoughtful um, 
research into into so much so many so many items that we can pull out and i mean i thought of this could go in a million directions with what we do in terms of um, being directors and so um, i'm interested to hear um, people's questions um, as it relates to what we do i know there we've lost a few people but we still have quite a few on so i would ask at this time if you have specific questions um, for uh, for our presenters to please either text them to me on the chat or you can use the hand raise function for us to call on you. Um, give me just a second to keep my eye on your hand raises. Um, let me see, I've got a chat here. And Stavro, I think, do I see your hand raised? Yes, I guess you do. As you can see it. Um, I guess my, my question or comment, I would just be interested to hear your thoughts. Um, uh, th throughout the lecture, you all went through various um, events and um, organizations that have helped attribute it to dance over time. Um, what would be the one, if you had to pick one, what would be the one item or event that you would most attribute to change in performances over time? And how do you see, do you see a continual change going and where do you see that change going considering what we do here in the United States with competitions, et cetera? Cool. Christo? Hey, Dane. Oh. Is it is now, but it's not Oh. Stavro, this is a real good question, very hard to, to answer. I like to give you the hard ones, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No, 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 that, that, I mean, it's the most, the most provocative. I mean, because of, again, uh, let, let's put it that way. I think guys, we are more progressive than, than we are in Greece, actually, even in terms of stage right now. I know, you know, I know all of you, I know all of you this audience. And now after all these years, back and forth in stage, I think I can, I can tell. We have many, many transformations in the EFIMA. Sometimes because of the, the communities themselves. Sometimes because of the syllogy of the dance, from the dance groups. But all of these things, either way, there is a theory about the parallel traditions. Actually, this theory comes from the States, a great scholar, Tony Say, I think John knows him, about the traditions of the Zero the tradition of the builders. They, they don't go in parallel, they interwave all the time. Now, about, about the staging, if, if this, this is a question about, about the staging, it's very, very, very difficult to represent all this. There are conventional, but there are conventions because we're talking about stage folklore. All the Gelacanome, we don't do the real paradoxy on stage. And this is not the question, but does give us the, the opportunity to try things, to express themselves through teaching and through staging. But there is no, I, I don't believe there is an ideal kind of performance. There is no, uh, there is uh, only black and white in this, in this situation. Anna? Okay. Uh, the point is with uh, perform, uh, your question is actually how we perform finally. And what is um, the material that we would like to display or to transform to a uh, real performance? Okay. Um, the thing is, what is the purpose? It's totally different if you prepare a small piece of a quarter, let's say, for the competition that all of you are familiar, I guess. And it's totally different if you like to organize a whole performance. If you um, um, 
we specify for the competition, then there the dynamic of the dancing must be very, it plays an important role. Uh, even you use a slow dance or you use a high dance or whatever, a mix or, or an event or um, a custom or whatever. The, uh, the, condi the condition and the purpose is totally different. If you prepare a performance for the stage, a whole performance, a real performance, or a mega event, as we used to say, in a Rodriguez theater or the town hall in New York or in the um, Wimbledon School uh, in, uh, in um, London and uh, so on, we must, the uh, artistic part must be part of the presentation. You can't put one uh, dance after the other uh, just to um, create uh, a panigiri on the stage. This is very difficult. But first of all, because all dances are not professional, are amateurs. We ask all the time new things for the, uh, from the dancers in order to make rehearsals, to make new costumes, to um, invent new dance, not invent with the idea from our imagination, but to try to find new material because um, audience come to see people, uh, the, the dances of the Greeks. So every time we must uh, invent various tricks in order to make the performance more attractive for the uh, for the audience and we uh, uh, be, uh, in the past was the costume the the main uh, um, key of the performance new costumes for uh, new invented uh, areas not that uh, we um, for instance uh, in 1978 uh, we went uh, to Episcopi and suddenly we brought the costume of Episcopi back. We present the um, uh, suite of Episcopi, several dances in a form in a suite. And after that, all groups, all association take the uh, ready-made uh, suite and they adjust their own, for their own needs. Uh, in 1981, the Lyceum Club organized uh, uh, on the Rome Saticus Theater, the well-known and very uh, well-produced, uh, the, wed the wedding uh, ceremony on the stage. Do you know how many marriages I have seen in my life since then? every village organize a uh, marriage on the stage, their own marriage. Women, old women play the role of the, uh, uh, of the mother of, of the bride, of the, the father of the bride. Everybody uh, has to say various wishes. They it, it is very nice. But no one ha has objection against this. Uh, however, is not a artistic performance. The theater has its own roles, to my to my knowledge. The lighting, how it must be, the music, the musicians, um, the scenery, if it is important, um, the entrance, and uh, how people uh, go out of the scene. There are uh, things that. Uh, a, a choreographer, a real choreographer, has to learn before starting choreograph. So we need, um, we dance for our own sake. We enjoy dancing. We enjoy traveling and present our dances abroad. However, if we, um, I must say so, uh, something and uh, but you can understand me. Uh, in uh, 60, between 65 and 69, the Lyceum started to 
perform every uh, week, once a week, on the Aliki Theater. Uh, uh, we spoke about that. Under the suspicions of the national uh, organization, uh, the tourist organization. This permanent um, performances every Wednesday, every Tuesday. It was so heavy for us students. They had to follow their own uh, um, classes. Uh, we started with a group of 30 uh, persons and at the end we were only 10 and we change uh, costume in order to um, make, uh, or make the performance because uh, dancers are all amateurs and if they have even to go for a, a meeting or for flir fl fl flirting or for a, a serial job or whatever it's say okay I can come so it is we dance for our own pleasure at the same time, if we do a good job, it's a very good for us. I don't know if I answered your question. No, I think you did. You definitely did, and, and and more. Like we said, there's so many avenues you could take. Most of these most of these topics, so we could we yeah. could definitely go on. Uh, I want to move on to someone else who had their hand raised to make sure that we get everyone's questions. Um, Chloe, do you not want to unmute? Uh, yes. Hi guys. Okay. Hi. So. <laughs> Dr. Lutzaki, you actually, um, this sounded right in my head, so if this comes out weird, sorry, y'all. When you talk about the nature of performances, and specifically with what we do here in the States with HDF and FDF and all that kind of thing, do you think, and this is where it's going to sound crazy, do you think the director, us as directors, should place more emphasis on specific traditions of the villages that we're trying to portray or is it more important to focus all of our efforts on getting the steps and the songs right or does it matter both actually are right mm -hmm. and both are wrong uh, in, in which way uh, in which way uh, if you focus on on steps then you lose the essence if you know the tradition, let's say the culture, not the tradition, the culture, you can think in a different way. And if you have a director who knows the, the, the culture and you transmit, uh, transmit to you, then it is easily to understand. I, I will tell you an example. If I tell you, uh, your name is Chloe, you uh, dance like an ox. What do you think? I mean, I'd probably cry, but like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Is a curse? Is a, is bad for you? Have to to change something in your behavior? dance behavior uh, i see uh, this is the instruction that a mother from uh, eastern romilia said to the child uh, his uh, her child because the, the the steps are heavy an ox is a useful animal in their own life and the child has the image of the ox how walk so heavy steps so i don't want to be an ox you be, i would like to be lighter in your steps it's not a curse but it's an instruction how you uh, can dance better can you understand the difference it's not only the, the step, if you know the background then you can give images you can create images in order for the person to understand the meaning of the dances so it's so it's a balance is is the point yeah 
a delicate balance. I want to I want to quickly go back to a, a comment I saw Dimitri Tashi post, and it's a, and it's I think he was referring maybe to the first answer to the first question, which was all of the elements of performance and mm -hmm. being true to the to the to the material. And he says, and do it in twelve minutes on stage. And that's the challenge that we have um, as directors is to condense all of those important elements and put them into something very short and and impactful. So. Um, I don't know, Dimitri, if you wanted to say anything more about that, but I just thought that was a nice um, addition to that comment. Um, if not, I see a hand from Anna. You would see these. Actually, it's from her husband. <laughs> I, I should have known. I should Because I'm on her Zoom, but we're doing it on her computer because I, I, I only have it on my phone. So first, I wanted to um, thank um, Christa and Anna for the great presentation. I think um, anyone who is a director in the United States, it doesn't matter, HDF, FDF, or just these independent groups that are out there, understand sort of the history and the chronology of Greek dance. I think that's critically important. So that's why I think this was such an important brief. But I want to ask the directors out there, whether you're a seasoned director and you've been around for a long time, or whether you're sort of new and coming into this, what are the takeaways that you took? Because I can list numerous. So I'll pause there. And if you don't respond, then I'll just reach out to some of the directors that I know uh, better than others to respond to that question. Over. What's what, what, uh, uh, Can you repeat it? A little bit slower. Can you repeat it? No, no, no. So, no, no, no. So the question is, is for the instructor, the instructors that are in the. Um, on the Zoom call, which is what are what are the key things they learned from what you and Christo had to talk about in terms okay. of what? So I, I learned a lot, and I've heard a lot of this information before. But how would I, uh, you know, how how did they view? It? What did they take away? How might that impact their research, their approach to Greek folk dancing now, their performances next year, whether it's for a festival at, at their church or uh, wherever they perform, or even for HDF or where, wherever they might go. No. Just to warm, warm people up, I can give you my thoughts, mm -hmm. if you want one. Um, I, I thought um, there were a couple of things that Husto mentioned that I think some of us that may have been directing for a long time probably have figured this out a little bit over time, but maybe uh, it's a good reminder and also a good uh, something to think about for people who are newer uh, and, have, and have groups for the first time even is that every single person in the line is, in, is important and plays a role. Um, I think that is something, especially for performance in terms of competition, we, we tend to focus <clears throat> on a leader or someone who maybe is a focal point, but, um, and to make sure that each individual um, realizes their role and importance as well. And also the fact that we dance for each other, I think that's a nice thing. It's almost like a good mantra to keep remembering. Um, and that, yes, it is for ourselves, but it's, it's, it's social and it's, it's reflective of each other. So I like those points. Anyone else that wants to jump in on that before Adi calls on you? Cause he will. Yeah, can I jump in on it for two seconds? Yes. Yes. So <clears throat> I actually think it kind of sums up sort of what we're all trying to do in terms of not only perform, obviously, yeah, we're competing and all of that, but just for the sake of portraying just these little snippets in time. And I think that's what a lot of people who maybe, you know, are just kind of starting directing, like, or when they really get into it, they see, like, it's not just perhaps picking a vast area where you're going to dance, you pick a specific village and then you figure out what Ephima you want to portray and the costumes and all that. And so just a shout out to Paul, your drama suite from this past HDF was like absolutely awesome. And so those are the kind of details that me as a director going forward, when and if that ever happens, that I will take with me to kind of find those little nuances. And so hearing both of you speak kind of actually reinforces that. Same thing with Mito's Metsovo suite, like the whole thing just kind of pulls together to where spectators aren't just looking at, are they doing a certain dance correctly? It's like if I were to take a snapshot at Metsovo circa 1934 or whatever, like would it look like this? Which is really cool, just saying. Chloe, that's the, the one thing, it was context. <laughs> You know, that's that when, especially yeah. when it at the beginning laid it all out. There's a there's a historical context of, of what you know what's done throughout the year 
based on you know linkages to the church and then there's a a, a, a ritualistic aspect that goes along with it so you know, i think that's critically important because sometimes you know that doesn't come together per se in a performance. So I think that's a really important thing that directors need to, to focus on and take away from this. Yeah, turn up. There are a couple couple of comments too in the chat. Some of you could, you could probably read them, but Vanetta mentioned that um, dancing with purpose is was a key takeaway for her. And then Electra, key things, the social context and cultural significance of Greek dances are more important than the theatrical performance, which are separate from the real events. Performances help us remember and learn about the real events. Very nicely put, Electra, thank you for that. Anyone else wanna jump in? Can I say something? Uh, of course, please, yes. Well, again, of course, the social context and the cultural significance, okay, but we should realize that teaching and performance are outcomes of social transformations and historical changes. After 1940, the Greek rural environment was totally destroyed. People gathered in Athens, most of them. And that's the way they started the Desilogy. Don't forget that the Kritika or Nisiotika Kendra or the deadly basements in Plateo Monias playing Cabisia or Clarina was something like a community scene. They try to refresh and reconnect with the, with the, the Hoyani. So it's very, it's, it's very easy to blame, you know, performances and their groups. I, I'm talking about the, about the article here. We're very, very easy to the critique, but we should realize why. Why? That's why, that's why me and Rena we enjoy uh, some of your performances in ASDF, or many of your performances in ASDF, much more. But this, because of their background, well, your background and your society is different, you are not so connected in, the, in very static concepts of authenticity. Try to do things dirty, I like that, that term a lot. And uh, on the other hand, still in Greece, we try to, uh, we tend to, the, to homogenize things. For me, now in Athens, uh, my students, or in dance group here in Athens, their lower body rocks. Dancers' lower body rocks. Their face, I mean, flying over the water. But the upper body is nothing. If we, if we learn them to totally be like that. They think I am very happy and the real joy in FDF, advanced senior and SDF, by the years come much better, is that, is that. They're, they're, we're trying, there are four groups that are trying now to do something, but still we are very sticking very, in many stereotypes. But we have performances now that are totally different. They try to, to present the flow and, and the steps, not in very strict and homogenized way, which is very difficult. And this is a matter of, of teaching. How, how can I, you as a director, can teach 100, 20 different dancers, two or three different styles? This is the, it's, it's a great challenge. It's, it's a great, it's a really great, um point and, a, and especially a challenge for those of us who teach uh, teenagers or middle schoolers where they're at a really self-conscious age so you're, you're overcoming a lot of I mean so many barriers at that point um, Mike Hawkins is that you did you are you trying to speak Mike oh I was gonna ask I was gonna ask Christo uh, first of all I do agree with Dr. Um, Lujaki and Dr. Baba Costas that we need to understand the, the, the culture behind and understand the local uh, traditions to be able to depict them properly. So I could totally agree that the, the study of, uh, but you mentioned something about FDF. So do you recommend that some directors that they are not part of FDF, well, everybody's part of FDF. Do you think they should participate and understand the difference or the, the different impact that FDF can have to the, to the rest of the directors? Do you think it would be helpful for them to visit? 
other groups the, the men, the men. other groups or even the directors themselves um since you mentioned that there is a difference in how they 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 uh, they dance collaboration with for me is uh, very important very productive <laughs> if you can uh, discuss and uh, exchange ideas is uh, very good right. um i would like to say something uh, an experience, but no. not with folk dancing. Uh, when I started teaching dance anthropology at the Aegean University, the students were very delighted, new subjects, very good, but they wanted also to practice a little bit, uh, not folk dancing. Some of them, they knew some, some dances, Chamikos, Kalamatianos, but uh, nothing more. Uh, so they wanted modern dance, and I create a tape uh, with a history of social dancing uh, in Greece, from Kadrig to the rock. So I started with a couple dancing because the first were polka um, and students were so unfamiliar to hold each other, they didn't know how to touch the other, to embrace walls, tango, distances. When they started to start shake, then start to be a little bit, to feel a, a little bit comfort, more comfortable. And then they say, ah, we know these dances, our mother used to, uh, to dance this. So every, age has its own um, uh, movements in order to, to use. Uh, the point is uh, the collaboration. If you speak with the other, you uh, explain the difficulties, you, the, your foundings, and we change ideas, and each director can uh, continue to do, to do uh, its own, his own work. However, the social context, what is the point? If you have to teach tango, you use only one form. If you try to use on Arabicos, you have a broad uh, phase in order to teach. Because if you look in a circle, you can find how many people are, no one, can dance in the same way with the, his neighbor in the circle. So the moment you look in the circle, you see different ways and you create your own style, which you try to give to your students, but you, your students have no the opportunity to show other people except you. So everybody, my own students dance like me. But if I have a video to show to them, then they start to understand that is something different. And they, they uh, can dance more freely. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm curious too, on kind of on that same point, um, a lot of us, the way that our programs are set up, um, we grow with a group over time. So we, the, the same group of, chill, of kids, of dancers, may be exposed to one or two teachers, the same ones, for many years. Do you think there's more value then in having a group exposed to different teachers over time? Obviously, we have workshops, but their primary teachers, in a lot of cases, are the same, maybe over 10 years. Uh, what do you mean different teachers? In other words, like, okay. should they, right, should they? Most of the directors uh, uh, comes from the same, uh, uh, similar source. Mm -hmm. One from the other. Learn one from the other, or inside the same group. Uh, it's not the point to all to come to Greece. Uh, thank you very much, welcome. Uh, for our tourism economy is very good. However, is, is not the point. The, the thing is, there are books, there are videos, 
not YouTube. YouTube is one uh, source, but not always uh, the best. There are um, uh, ethnographic uh, videos that you can uh, films that you can uh, use uh, to to try to see different images. Right. That's so even true. even if we don't have the the resources or the ability to have a different te uh, and director on site or teachers to at least use use resource materials to 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 show a different voice, let's say. Yeah. Okay, um, we are we're definitely over time, but um, a lot of you have hung in and it's been it's been really super. So I'm just going to give a last call for questions um, before we wrap up. Anyone that wants to either jump in or raise a hand is welcome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to remind everyone that we are going to um, send the, these recordings, the lecture as well as the Q&A out to all of you. Um, sometime this week and uh, with a follow-up and I think we'll also be able to put the attachments on there um, and so before we end end um, just any final thoughts from our presenters I see Rachel raising his hand very yes please, please, please. yes sir that's to be because you know you understand again that Rena is uh, typhoon category six it's, it's stronger than Katrina sometimes so she did left some time to say hello, <laughs> all of you. Uh, well, I'm, I'm very, very, very moved and very, very happy, actually. Very, very happy. Because it's always very productive. It's a great pleasure. And you guys from the make us to think about the Greek dance in a broader way. It's uh, Was today, Tonight for us was a great challenge. We make two or three tests with Rena. And it's very easy. I realized a decade ago that it's very easy to do an academic lecture. We have our wooden language <laughs> for us. And it's easy. But for this audience with different levels of experience, different backgrounds, it's very, very hard. So we try to combine a one-on-one one -on -one Greek dance introduction with, and to, to have some inputs uh, for further considerations. It's not easy, it's a great challenge. We wish uh, for a second round. Thank you, thank you all, thank you all. And thank you, Stacey, for coordinating and for the idea. Yeah, I would like to say something. Yes, please. Oi, put your yeah. Uh, first of all, excuse me for all these um, ir irregularities. <laughs> and anyway, it was the first time anyway, and it was difficult. And uh, I, I saw the problem I had with my uh, the, um, video, but because all shops uh, uh, are closed at uh, the time, uh, I ordered to have an extra on the top in order to face you, to have face to face. But they said after 15 days, so it was useless to wait, or only through online. That's, I close. Uh, it was a great experience, actually. Uh, Stacy, really thank you, not only you, but in your face, all of you. Uh, and uh, what uh, I have to suggest, uh, probably instead to uh, present something, to send the paper to you and to distribute to the people to know exactly what we want to say. And then after a short presentation, we ha would have a better discussion. If you would like to repeat. I, I, think, I think that's a, a really lovely idea. Actually, I think a lot of people would like to look more closely um, at, at all that, digest it, like you said, and, and to speak again. So let's, let's talk about that offline and we can maybe coordinate a way for, for whoever's interested to have a second conversation. Thank you for offering that. I, I really, I can't say enough um, to thank you both um, for the love. Thank and, and the, yes. One last word, one last word. And don't, don't forget to please realize that it's your idea. We worked with that the last couple of months that embraced from uh, Father Mark, from the, the other ladies, Veneta and Amy and, and Pablo, they, they, they have 
a committee which is very important because it is not uh, a dry or uh, between friends, something between friends, and but it's official. This is a, an official bridge between the diaspora and the homeland. For me, this is the most important, and we should be very proud about that. No, thank you, Christo. You've always been very gracious, and I, I meant it when I said. To and you. of course, uh, we will um, pre um, prepare a proper PowerPoint, whatever it is, to to give you for your archive, and with the bibliography, uh, in order for, for those who want to learn something more. Coming soon. Um, very quickly, I just want to address something that someone asked um, in the chat. It was regarding uh, what's going to happen with HDF next year, and I know it's um, been on all of our minds. There, there's um, at this point, there's no news to tell. Um, I would, I know for us in Charlotte, we're going to keep working as if it's going to happen with with a, a positive outlook. Um, so you just know that whenever any decisions come up or things change, you'll you'll be the first to know. But um, let's think positive and hope that we'll be together in Winston-Salem in January. Um, and, Father? and we are, um, at we, I can speak for Christos as well, whatever you want, you can uh, just write uh, iludaki at gmail.com and I can answer to you. Get ready. You're going to be on a lot of group texts now and emails. <laughs> okay. Thank you all so much. Father Mark had to had to leave a little bit early. So he wanted to um, send his best and thank you all. And just to um, say Christos Anesti once again, um, I won't sing for you, but um, thank you all very, very much. Look out in your emails for the follow-up. And Christos and Renana, thank you again once more for all that you did for us and we'll hopefully continue to do. We hope to have you close to us very, very soon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.